But I think I'm on now. <clears throat> I don't know what happened uh, earlier. It's like every time I try to come on right at 9.15, something technical happens and it just throws me off. Why that's so, I don't know. But uh, um, we're here now and we are in business for sure. For sure, for sure. Um, uh, we have one person on. Good night to you. <laughs> How are you doing? Uh, I'm just trying to get my bearings here. Uh, yeah. Hello to you, whoever you are. Oh, faithful person. Um, I. We're <laughs> taking attendance. I appreciate that. Um, two friends are on already. Uh, we we are running um running a little bit off time, but I appreciate you coming on. Every time I try to to log on just now, I kept saying that we cannot give, do a live video, and I was like, no, that can't happen. <laughs> so, so I was a little bit scared. We we're talking a pretty exciting topic tonight. Um, so I would appreciate if you uh if you would share share with your friends, let everybody know that we're here. We're gonna talk. Um restoring uh intimacy after after the fight um pull this around here and see um that's something that um uh i'm trying to make sure i can see the comments tonight just like last time um not able able to see every comment i'm just going to give it a little bit of time for folks to come on uh and then we're going to get started what we're talking tonight is um restoring intimacy after the fight um a lot of times the uh the folks are going to start coming on after we share the video so i'm going to do my part and uh share the video on a couple of the pages that i have just going to help to move it along um We'll move it along quite a bit. So let me see here what I can do. If I can share this, it's going to help to move it along. Um, we'll move it along quite a bit. So let me see here what I can share, do. Share, share, share on my own timeline. It's going to help to move it along. Um, we'll move it along quite a bit. So see here what I do. Uh, I miss Rodriguez if you're still there. Uh, I'm gonna do a little bit more sharing here. Uh, share it on here. Also share here. One more, one more group. I'm going to give it a little bit more time for some folks to come on. We just have a couple of people on right now. If I can get um, get some more folks to come on, then we can kind of get started here. Um, on this. Um, particular video are we talking restoring intimacy after the fight or intimacy after the fight just trying to give it a little time here for more folks to come on a couple of you are on right now i don't want to miss anybody right So, uh, how is everybody doing? Um, the two of you that are on, um, share with your friends. If you don't share, you don't care. If you share, I uh, don't want to get started quite yet if I don't have um, have the audience uh, coming out. So, I just want to give it a couple more, a couple more minutes. There's three. Let's get to five. Let's get to five. We get to five. We can get started. Um, uh, Five, 
pictures. I'm going to take this one off the pin so it can drop, um, get off the pin from the top of the page. Oops. Um, and this one. Let's see if we can get some more folks on. Let's just have a couple people on. Um, you know, I'm gonna I'm gonna get started because I, I want to share with uh, share with you a few things of importance here. I don't want don't want you to. A couple people more coming on at this point. Uh, see the audience is building a little bit. Um, so. If you're here and you want to say hello, go ahead and do that. I, I would appreciate it so I know who you are. Uh, I see Miss Rodriguez is back uh, and my faithful sister-in-law sister is back. I appreciate that. Um, let's get started. Uh, so we're talking about restoring the intimacy after the fight. And one of the things that I wanted to, to share with you is I wanted to talk about this idea of, you know, what is conflict? So before we, we actually talk about um, restoring intimacy after the fight. Let's talk for a second about what is conflict. Um, if because if you have a fairly good understanding of what conflict is, then we can kind of move into what do you do after the conflict. So what is conflict? So conflict is any disagreement, any discord, any difference of opinion that you have with your partner. And so I, there was a discussion that we had, uh, you know, on Facebook on my my uh, my other page where. Folks were saying to me that if you make a distinction between conflict, arguments, and a disagreement, uh, you know, or a fight, and all of them in my mind are the same. But for some people, said to me when you use the word fight, it feels a lot more like like you're like a war, you know, <laughs> um, as opposed to a disagreement. But all of these represent a conflict, some differences of opinion of some sort. So a fight may not involve any kind of physical. Um, uh physical input hi Latasha um but all but understand that a fight is something that's that that whether it is you call it a conflict whether you call it a disagreement they're all essentially um they're all essentially a conflict so what is conflict a conflict is any kind of discord any kind of disagreement that that one has uh with the partner or, or uh, in this case, we're talking a partner. Partner, so uh, so that's that's a conflict. Is conflict good or bad? No. Um, that <laughs> that's a personal. Uh, in my opinion, conflict is a good thing. But the challenge is that <clears throat> if you see conflict, <clears throat> excuse me, if you see conflict as a bad thing, you're you're really heading for problems because. Anytime that you perceive you perceive conflict as a bad thing, oftentimes what we tend to do is to run away from it or to find some way to crush it. And in my mind, I think you know that it's important for us to to kind of to be comfortable with the idea that that conflicts are important, they're valuable in a relationship because they help uh, individuals learn new things about the other person and they really kind of promote growth in the relationship. Um, Hi, Dion. How are you? Well, thank you for that. I'm kind of watching my um, watching my feed here. Um, so, if if you're in a situation where um, you, you see conflict as bad, I think it's really important that you um, you kind of rethink some of that because. Conflict in itself is not necessarily a bad thing. Anytime that you perceive conflict as a bad thing, we're going to have some issues in the relationship. Um, just remember, guys, if you have any questions and you, or you want to say anything in the news feed, or in the feed, I can see the feed, uh, so you want to share those. And also, just remember that um, you want to share the video on your pages because that's part of how this thing is pushed out. Um, to to other um, other individuals, so uh, there are just a few of you on tonight. But um, if you can push the uh, share the video, if you choose to share the video on your page, that would be great. 
as well as if any questions come up in your mind that you want to share with others, go ahead and do that because those questions help to keep the discussion going and really kind of help other people to, to become more and more engaged uh, in the conversation as we go forward. So, so we talked uh, just a second ago about this idea that conflict is a good thing, right? And, and so if you find yourself in a situation where we often do, we find ourselves in a situation where we're, um, we have a conflict with our partner, a lot of times, you know, what this discussion is about is what do you do after? Um, you, you said all you had to say, you know, you're feeling frustrated, and, but at the, at the core of it, you're in a relationship with this person. What do you do? to bring that relationship back to a place where the two of you feel connected again? Well, I mean, that's a question, that's the question that I want to help you uh, to work through or to resolve tonight. You know, how do we, um, how do we get to a place where we, where we, we can kind of restore the relationship even after you've had, you've had a conflict and that, that's what we're talking about. Um, <clears throat> I think one of the first things that I want to share with you is to understand that your default really has to be about um, being calm. I mean, it seems pretty simple. I know it's not easy, especially in the face of, you know, a disagreement of some sort with your partner. But that really needs to be your default. I, uh, it really needs to be a default. Can you guys hear me? If you can hear me, just go ahead and um, and let me know in the feed. Dion, can you hear me at all? Can you guys hear me? If you can't hear me, uh, just let me know. Okay, all right, appreciate it. Um, good. So. The default is thanks. I was just unsure whether you, whether you could hear me or not. The default really is to remain is to remain calm because, and I'll tell you the reason why. Because for some reason, the uh, the if you're not able to remain calm, a lot of times your partner feeds off of that negative energy, and they they ultimately begin to engage in a conflict because they are. Um, they see you as defensive or they see you as attacking. So they they ultimately, they're pushing the envelope too, trying to defend themselves or try or get in uh, on the attack. And so what I, what I want to kind of share with you as a first point is to understand that um, the broadcast looks as though it's disrupted. Um, to understand that it, it becomes really, really important for you to make sure that you can stay to stay calm because staying calm I um, let's see here okay. The internet connection in here tonight is a little bit loopy doo. It's been going on all day, um, but I was hoping that tonight we wouldn't wouldn't have these issues. But it may go in and out. But let's continue the conversation. So if you have a, find yourself in a situation where you're gonna find yourself in a situation where you're having conflicts with your partner, it's important to understand that they will feed off of your energy. So you need to do whatever it, you can to ensure that you remain calm. Otherwise, you, the conflicts tend to escalate, and we find ourselves fighting about um, find ourselves fighting about fighting, and that in itself obviously is a problem in the, in the relationship. But if you can muster the energy to remain calm, then they tend to be, your partner may also follow. Um, follow uh, your lead. I think another really big concept in, in understanding or restoring intimacy uh, in the relationship is understanding, let it focus in on understanding and not self-protection. 
because both people have a perspective on the issue and they they want to be able to share that perspective and a lot of times the um a lot of times if you can ask yourself what is it that she or he is trying to get across to me then in some ways that you know asking that question may allow you to 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 really kind of probe and kind of try to get a deeper understanding of what's happening in the interaction in the relationship and am i gone again or you can't hear me uh can you hear me now just let me know if you can still hear me um Hey guys, it looks as though you should be able to hear me uh, hear me now because the feed is back up. If you can't hear me, just let me know. Um, let me know if you can't hear me. But right now, it looks as though the feed is back up, so we're we're moving along. Um, so the the idea is to focus on to focus on uh, understanding as opposed to self protection and understand that that. What part of the big issue in um, in being able to restore intimacy or being able to restore a connection during a conflict is understanding that um, that self protection, while it is helpful for you, it really can stunt the growth of the relationship. All right, I think I'm back up. I just try to change the connection, um, and it should be working now. On a little bit of a stronger signal. Don't know what's happening tonight, but um, got a little bit of a, a stronger signal, so it should be working. If it's not working, just let me know. I'm gonna keep talking um, for for now. Hi, Debbie. Uh, thanks for letting me know that you can hear me. At least you can hear me now. The feed should be better, so we should be able to keep going. Um, so the the issue again is that you want to. Focus your energy more on understanding as opposed to self-protection. If you can kind of focus your energy in that in that direction, you're probably going to find yourself in a much better um, in a much better space uh, in terms of being able to manage your relationship. Now, I think the other thing, as I share with you a number of tips, um, I want you to to kind of keep this particular thing in mind. Just one second. I want you to keep this particular idea in mind as I go through these these particular these tips. I want you to keep in mind this idea that you want to trust the process more than you trust your partner. <laughs> so bear that bear that idea in mind. It the tr the trust in the process more than you trust your partner. And part of the reason why I say this is because is because when when things don't necessarily go as well as you want them to go, it's important that you that you um you follow the rules. Like I said earlier, it's important that understanding is more important than self protection. It because sometimes your partner is not is not necessarily going to move at the pace that you're moving. But if you kind of follow a process that says, you know, for me at this point in time, I'm going to remain calm, or I'm going to focus on trying to understand this person or understand my partner, and you put that before your own need for self protection. That tends to help push the process along a lot better than trying to um, going into this mode of self defense, right? So, let's kind of get into the meat of this. So, I've talked about this idea that conflict is, uh, I feel like so I have some momentum now because things seem to be just going crazy. The first 15 minutes of this now understand that that um we talked about this idea that conflict is not necessarily a bad thing we've talked about this idea that um it's important to remain calm uh in in, in the conflict we've talked about this idea of focusing on understanding and, and not necessarily self-protection and we've also talked about this idea of um trusting the process um uh, so the, the I think the the issue here is that what I wanted to share you, with you right now is that is that um, 
kind of talk to my wife at the same time. Uh, I don't think that she can see what you guys can see. Um, and I'm trying to make sure that she's she's on she's on the same page so she can kind of do some things. Um So I want to break this down into uh, into three different sections to help you to understand what do we do after um, uh, after the conflict uh, has happened to restore the intimacy. I want you to break it down into uh, what what to think, um, what to do and what not to do, and what to say and what not to say. So those are three areas that we're going to break it down into: what to do um what to think what to do or what not to do um and then also what to say uh so i'm gonna run a quick test again because i want to kind of get into the meat of this and the audience is building the um the can you guys hear me okay no problems hearing me because more people are coming on now it feels as though we have a little bit of momentum um can you guys hear me all right no issues if not, we're going to keep flowing. Um, can you hear me now? Can you hear me now? Like that guy, what's the AT&T? No, um, Sprint. Um, all right, so my wife can hear me now. So I think we're good to go. All right, thanks. Um, so what do you, what to think? So remember, we're breaking this down into three sections. We're, sections we're talking about what to think. Some of you have heard me talk about this idea now of flooding. Now, in a after you've gone passed through this conflict, so the big issue now that you have kind of swirling around in your mind is that you're thinking all these negative things about your partner, and you know that and every bad thing that they've ever done <laughs> throughout the course of time is like now in your head and. And it's swimming around in your mind. You're like, oh my God, you know, I, 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 you know, my partner, my wife, my husband, they're crazy. There's all this stuff going on with them. Um, for those of you who've just come on, you know, give a shout out, say who you are, just say hello. It would be great. Just that we know who's on. Um, that is a part of what's happening is a process called flooding. And we've talked about flooding in the past where the brain is actually primed. To make you believe that um, for the purpose of self-protection, that 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 person that your um, your partner is somehow out to get you, or they're somehow doing and saying things that are designed to hurt you. I'm, I'm what I want to let you know or to share with you right now is that you do not want to follow every thought that comes into your head after a conflict, because your the brain is set or is Prime to um, to make you believe things that aren't necessarily true, but they're but they're there for your self protection. So, what to think in terms of where we are right now? What to think? Um, what to think is not what you're thinking after the conflict. Any thoughts that go through your head about your partner after the the conflict, I will be very 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 careful to not allow those 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 uh, thoughts. To, to fester in the mind. So I would try very hard to disregard those thoughts because those thoughts are disconnecting, are there to promote disconnection. They're pro there to promote self-protection. So that's the first thing when you think about uh, uh, what to do after after the conflict. Appreciate those of you who are coming on. Um, what to do after the conflict uh, to restore intimacy is to do not, uh, what to think is to not think the thoughts that are going through your head, and it sounds a little bizarre, but you do not want to take the allow those thoughts that you that are going through your head to fester in the mind. They will create problems for you. Um, the other thing is that uh, what you want to think in your mind are reconciliation thoughts. Um, thank you very much, Dion. What you want to think in your mind, and I see that my wife is on. Finally, I appreciate that. I feel so alone. If she's not, she's not on helping me out. Uh, what you want to think is, are reconciliation thoughts. How can we make this work? 
What are some of the things that I may have missed in this situation? Is this something that we need to we need to get help with? Any thought that um, that promotes reconciliation is where where one needs to consider taking um, taking your money. And by the way, again, um, remember to keep sharing this video because as you share, more people are going to come on uh, come on and, and and engage in the conversation. And if you have any questions, please also um, share those questions uh, on 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 the video. I really would appreciate that. Um, so I've I've told you what are some of the things that you can think uh, during during the conflict. So some of those things include: um, Am I missing something? Is there something that I can consider? It, it also is important um, to some le some degree to kind of think about uh, what um, what should I do? What can I do uh, to uh, to to reconnect with my my partner? Right. Or to ask yourself that question, like I said earlier, am I missing um, points where where my partner was trying <clears throat> was or is trying to connect with me? I think those are really important uh, pieces. I think it really is important at this point in time to kind of get in touch or be very very clear about what you're feeling, um, and not what he is doing or what she is doing. It becomes very very important to kind of get um, get in tune. With the what is it that I'm feeling? You know, what is it that is uh, uh, is causing me um, distress or pain or confusion uh, in the mind? So certain things like I'm feeling defensive, or I'm feeling not listened to, or I'm feeling um, not angry. And by the way, you don't want to say I'm feeling angry. I mean, you could say, it, but it's not really an effective or a good way of kind of defining what's happening. You don't want to say I'm feeling angry because anger is a secondary emotion. And anytime that you say I feel angry, there's always another emotion behind it. So I feel attacked. You know, I feel worried. I feel unsafe. I feel out of control. I feel um, powerless. I feel exhausted. All of those are kinds of um, of, of, of of statements that get very very specific about what you're feeling because now you're in a place where you're taking responsibility for um taking responsibility for your own feelings or for your own concerns or for your own needs and that is um that's important because what you're trying to do is to restore the connection between yourself and your loved one so so you're really kind of getting in touch with your feelings and the feelings that you're responsible for, as opposed to kind of pointing your finger at your partner and saying, you know, you did this or you did that, you did that. Be more in touch with what am I feeling right now? And, and I can go down the list. I feel alienated. You know, if if you have a situation where, uh, you know, the example that I like to give all the time where your partner comes home at later than you expected them to, you could shout at them. Or you could say, you know, I, you know, I, I missed you, and I was really looking forward to spending some time with you, uh, you know. Or if after the fact you said some things that you wish you hadn't said, it, it is helpful to, to, um, and then you, if your partner took that information and, and, you know, s says something that made you believe that you, um, that they don't understand you, then you could say, you know, I really feel misunderstood. As opposed to why the heck are you talking to me that way? Being able to to get in tune with the feelings and be able to express those feelings that's cool that's that's helpful because now you're in a place where they can understand specifically what's going on and you're talking about you you're you're being you're, you're personally sharing um how these feelings are how this thing is affecting you or your feeling right. So we've talked about what to think and, 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 and in some ways how to feel, how to express what you're thinking and how to express what you're feeling. And that that's that's important. That's important because remember the brain after a conflict, especially, the brain is primed in a in a in a, in a primal way, if I can use those terms. The the brain is primed to defend itself. And so, again, the thoughts that go through your head are thoughts that are essentially automated. 
to defend you, to defend you against your partner. It's a, it is it is almost like riding a bicycle, you know. The brand doesn't need your help. <laughs> it doesn't need your help to um to to come up with a way of dealing with the issue. All it all it knows is that it's quote unquote under threat. So what is it gonna do? It's going to um it is going to find a way to uh to protect you. So it will tell you that the partner that you love is is evil and you don't need to be with them. I mean, if, if you have clear evidence that you don't need to be with them, that's a different story. But a lot of times in the heat of a conflict, you know, we're we're thinking and seeing things that aren't necessarily there. Um, so let's get into the section of what to do, right, or what not to do. I, you know, in how to restore, in terms of how to restore the intimacy, one of the things that you really want to do or want to, to be open to is to be able to take, be good about taking breaks, you know, or, or or making sure that you're comfortable with the idea of taking a break. You know, you're not clinging to your partner. You're not saying, hey, we need to discuss this now. We need to resolve this now. Part of rebuilding or restoring intimacy is sometimes dealing with another issue for the time being or just kind of relaxing and enjoying uh, the company of one another. You may not necessarily, the two of you may not necessarily um, uh, talk or talk about the issue per se, but part of restoring intimacy is is being able to pause to say, hey, you know, we may not be able to resolve this issue. No, let's go watch some TV. Let's, you know, because the friendship or the connection should should stay regardless of what issues or what concerns you have. Making or maintaining or sustaining that connection becomes really, 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 really important. So be open to taking those breaks. Be open to saying, look, you know, you need to take a break from this. You probably shouldn't talk about this right now. Uh, welcome uh, to those of you who are popping in and out of the broadcast. I appreciate appreciate that. Um, so the other thing now is to not act as though nothing happened, right? La la la, you know, you know, you're acting as though you, you didn't have a, a, a conflict or you didn't have a disagreement and there's nothing to resolve or there's nothing to talk to talk through. If you you either agree that we're gonna table this or we're gonna uh table this to another time, or you may still, you know, let's agree to disagree. But don't act as though the issue isn't there, you know, because it tends to ooze out in other ways. And you don't really want that in your life. So I say try to make sure that that you um you don't act as though there's not nothing is happening, that there's no issue there. Because ultimately there is. There is an issue is there. No. So here's a big one. Big one. You ready for this big one? Are you ready for the big one? Um this the big one is uh do not take your conflicts to Facebook or to Twitter or to Instagram or any of these other social media sites because it undermines the relationship. You know, it undermines the trust. If your partner believes that every time a conflict occurs, you're going to take it to Facebook, you know, to kind of give this long tirade about what happened. Um, yeah, you're going to have an issue. So one of the big things in terms of, you know, in 2017, in terms of restoring intimacy in the relationship is to not take it to Facebook. Hi, I see somebody new. Uh, Veranda, thank you for coming on. I appreciate it very, very, very much. Um, <laughs> what did you say? Um, uh, you would like to think we, uh, we wouldn't have to yell uh, to tell grown folks uh, not to do this. I know, but it happens all the time. Sometimes I'm reading it and I have no relation, relation to the person. And I'm reading this stuff and I'm thinking, oh my goodness, you know, why why are you taking this stuff to Facebook? Um, but don't. If you want to maintain intimacy and a deep connection with your partner, I would stay very far away from Taking your issues to Facebook or Twitter or Instagram, for that matter. And one of the things I said earlier is is trying to make sure that you that your focus is understanding and not resolution. 
So a simple question in terms of if if you want to restore that intimacy with your with your with your partner, make them feel as though you're trying to understand their perspective. Hey, you know, please say it again because I'm trying really hard to understand where you're coming from. You know? Can you, can you explain to me get again your perspective on this issue? Right? And be quiet and 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 really listen and take in what the what the other person is trying to say. Because that can communicate that idea that you're asking questions, you're letting your partner know that I'm interested in you, I'm interested in hearing your perspective on this issue. And so to me, that the that act of leaning in and really showing that person, look, you know, I'm I'm there, I want to understand where you're coming from, is an extremely powerful approach to regaining and rebuilding that connection. Um, and so that that's an important uh, part of part of the process. And by the way, if you haven't seen this yet, uh, those of you who ordered last time, I appreciate that. If you haven't seen this yet, a lot of the information that 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 I have in um, that I'm talking about tonight is in my book, uh, What to Do Before, After, and During uh, During a Fight to Restore Intimacy. Um, this this book is available on. Um, uh, wefightfear.com. And so again, it, you know, the book talks about a lot of these principles, what to do before uh, in terms of planning for the eventual fights that are going to occur in the relationship. Um, yeah, so that I think that's a big, big deal. And if you, again, uh, wefightfear.com. I think I'll try to put this in the comments here. Let's see. Um, if you're there, there, can you see that? Uh, we fight. Uh oh, I did F E A R is F A I R. I think that should work. Um, no, there you go. Um, I, yeah, Dion, I did say. Did you did you say? Um, I did it twice. Why did I do that? Did you say? Focus on understanding and not resolution. I did. Because anytime that you focus on resolution, it almost it bypasses the person's opinions. And so you really want to focus on understanding because people who feel understood are more interested in the resolution. People who feel that they're being uh, bullied to resolve something, they, they're going to at some level believe that you're trying to bypass them or bypass their own bypass their uh their opinions or their ideas and and they're going to get defensive you know so understanding leads to openness and and that ultimately leads uh to resolution which is which is cool i think that that's 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 the right approach i hope that explains um where i'm coming from um the other thing too in terms of restoring the intimacy is don't let too much time pass between you know once you you've had a conflict and when you um when you uh you seek um restoration i i mean i i do this work on a, on, a, on a pretty much a daily basis and one of the things that i see uh, a lot in terms of the work that i do with couples is that is that people will go weeks sometimes you know i mean i i know this from personal experience that i've done it um will go weeks at a time where they're not talking to the other person except for transactions, except for doing, you know, the things that need to be done in the home. They're not speaking at all. They're just passing one another in the night. And the more days that you allow this to go on, the more difficult it is to restore the relationship. And it's really a lot of wasted time. If I remember that, that, we have more power than we think in the relationship in terms of restoration. If one person can take the risk and say, hey, look, <clears throat> if I, I think we need to talk about this. I think, I think we need to talk through this. You're probably going to get more mileage um, for your, uh, for your, um, you're going to maintain a stronger connection in the relationship. I'm sorry. 
uh, if you can be the person who decides, you know what, I'm going to I'm going to go forward. I'm going to talk this issue uh, through with you. If you don't, it, the thing just extends longer and longer, and longer, and it gets gets harder and harder and harder to really address the um, it gets harder to really address the uh, to, to reconnect it uh, again. So I say, don't let a, you know you know. For some of us, we'll say you know don't let the night pass um, or the sun go down in your anger. Well, I mean if that's possible, great. But I wouldn't let a day pass and you haven't tried to talk through an issue. I mean it's it's important and understand that you have a lot of power to to go to your partner and say, hey, look, let's talk about this. And you know understand that your partner is probably going to be a little resistant initially. But you've put it out there, you, or you could say, "Look, whenever you're ready, I'm open to talking about this." That's that's better than than the the, the time of not talking, because I will guarantee you this. The, and let's watch this for a second. The more time that you spend um, not talking, the the <clears throat> the greater the assumptions that occur across the uh, the relationship. And as the assumptions grow over time, those assumptions become entrenched, you know, in in the relationship. And those assumptions tend to build over time. And those assumptions tend to make you believe more and more and more and more that your partner is out to get you. But I found that when partners can actually talk about the issue, they can they can they can actually say, look, you know what? Here's what I was thinking about this. Here is what where I was coming from. If you can effectively communicate some of these things, you begin to realize you know you know what the, what I was thinking about this issue is not necessarily what was going. On. And I you know I'm if you ask Natasha, I mean I've I've said some things in in arguments. So this is what you're thinking of this issue. And then she's like, no, that's not what I was thinking. And I have to humble myself. But understand that this is what happens. This is what happens in in the relationship. You know, we find ourselves in a situation where um, these assumptions are based on self protection. Right. So don't let too much time pass. The more time passes, the harder it is to reconcile. Don't focus on what caused the fight. You know, we're f we're fighting because you didn't wash the dishes. Or you didn't pick the, the kids up from school uh, early enough. Um, focus on trying to understand again. Don't focus on what caused the fight. Because if you focus on what caused the fight, there's a tendency, in my mind at least, um, there's a tendency to, to get into an accusatory mode, which you know is going to create problems for you. So you focus on um, you focus on trying to understand. Uh, um, your partner's perspective. So you see a theme here. So here's a not, who here's a big don't. Um, a big don't is uh, don't use sex as a panacea. Try not to um, to laugh as I say this because for some people, you know, makeup sex is a big big thing, and no matter how much sex you have after a fight, it's not going to resolve. The issue at hand. Um, uh, resolving the issue requires talking, communicating, not sex in as opposed to sex in. So I would say, you know, don't use sex as a way of resolving conflicts because it, it won't. I mean, you could do whatever you want, but it's, it doesn't necessarily work. It's not an effective approach because you still have to talk through the issue, right? So I say, I say, let's focus more on communicating, talking about what needs are, what the concerns are, as opposed to trying to, um, as opposed to using sex as a panacea. Now, what do we say? So we're talking, we've talked about how do we think. Uh, we talked about what to do or what not to do. Um, the next thing is, what do you say to help to restore um, intimacy? So a big one, obviously, if we start out with, yeah, I'm sorry. Uh, make an apology, right? Now, 
there are different types of sorry and this is something that i wanted to go over um i wanted to go over with you a little bit there are different types of apologies there's an apology to appease so people often apologize to control uh somebody's feelings um you don't necessarily want to do apologize just to appease your partner um this apology does not come from a caring place uh i'm sorry uh, I didn't mean to do it. Your partner is going to sense it. They're going to know. They're going to have a, a sense that you're apologizing just, just for the sake of apologizing. You don't want to apologize um, just to appease the person. Um, apologizing on demand. You know, I, I, the, your partner says, you really should apologize for this. And you're saying, look, I'm sorry. Again, um, on the one end, partners should not push the other person to say, I'm sorry. And on the other end, because your partner says you, you need to say I'm sorry, it doesn't necessarily mean that you need to say sorry just to appease them or to, you know, or to, 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 um, to speak to the other person's, uh, to acquiesce, I'm sorry, to the other person's demands. I feel like uh, I'm talking here. I need to keep a little bit of a discussion going. So, I mean, if you guys have any questions, um, please feel free to share. And let me know. If there's any questions that you have, um, there's another one apologizing without apologizing. This is a way of apologizing that isn't an apology at all, but is a means to look like you're apologizing. Uh, so this is what it sounds like. I'm sorry if it hurt you. So the key word here is if. So if it hurt you, I'm sorry. Uh, what the person is saying is, I don't think I really did anything to hurt you, but if you think I <laughs> I hurt you, uh, then I will do dutifully apologize. So I, I you know I would say if you is best to be able to say look I'm sorry I'm sorry that I caused you hurt. It's not hard to re to recognize that um, that your partner is hurting. So d delete that if I'm sorry if I hurt you. I'm sorry that I caused you hurt. I'm sorry that I caused you a I caused you some pain. I mean that's um that's pretty important to kind of let your partner know that you know that you're you're causing them some pain, you know. Apologizing from guilt. You're just apologizing because you're feeling guilty. I mean that in itself is not necessarily the best way uh to apologize uh to your partner. Um you're apologizing to be polite. Right. Um, I think a good one, an important one that this this piece lays out is that you're apologizing for the sake of love. You're apologizing because you don't you want the, the emotional connection to remain in the relationship. You want the two of uh, you and your partner to to really uh, maintain a strong emotional connection. So you let them know that you're sorry. You're sorry for what you said. You're sorry for what you did. That. That is a healthy ap approach to um, to uh, an apology. So the other thing too is that we've talked a second ago a little bit about uh, about the apology piece. I think it's helpful to talk for a second about leaving a little bit of space for your partner to process uh, whatever the um, whatever the issues are that are that are going on uh, in the relationship. So. I think you know that it's helpful to um, give your partner some space, give them some space to think about what you know, what the next steps are for them in the interaction in the in the relationship. Give them a little bit of breathing room, you know, for them to to process what's going. And this applies to um, this applies to uh, saying I'm sorry. You know, if your partner says if your partner says um, they're sorry for something. I mean, understand that you don't you're not necessarily obligated to say, you know, I I accept your apology right now. The person may need some time to process uh what's going on, to to kind of to to, to go over in their mind what they're thinking. You need to give them to give them that time and that, that respect uh for them to process some of the issues. So I think you know that that there's some value in uh, doing that. There's some more people on here that I, you know, I can't always see everybody, um, but I want to welcome those of you who are new. 
um, to this uh, to this um, uh, couples fight school discussion. And we're talking about restoring intimacy after the fight, and we've gone over a bunch of things that, that if you want, and we're actually going to pin this um, this broadcast to the top of the couples fight school page. So if you wanted to see it again, um, that will be helpful. And thanks, Michelle, for coming on again tonight. Um, so leave some time for the person to process the issue. The and and that leads into the other piece, which is to understand. Um, uh, hold on a second, uh, Dion. And that is to understand um, your partner's style of thinking and processing. Everybody's not necessarily the same, and so your your partner. Some people want to kind of resolve issues or talk through things right there and then. And there's some people who need a little bit of time to process stuff. Knowing the difference between those two is is uh, helpful. I mean, I, I, I think that I, I'm one of those people that I want to kind of talk it, talk it through now. And I've learned over time to just give some time to think through stuff. You know, um, my wife, on the other hand, we, you know, from the beginning of our relationship, needed time to kind of think through stuff. And I all, oftentimes did not understand that, you know, and, and I saw it in a, in a negative light. But I think these days I've done a lot better in terms of um, just just understanding that we have a different way of approaching conflicts. Um, and both ways are, are correct. Right? Um, in terms of restoring intimacy, you want to avoid those four horsemen. Criticism, contempt, and uh, resent, re criticism, contempt, defensiveness, and stonewalling. We've talked about this in previous um, previous uh, Facebook lives. Uh, the challenge with resentment is that sometimes it's building, it's growing, and you can't really see it. You can't really see what's happening. And so I encourage my um, my my couples to. Talk through things that are that are concerning to them. Don't let the assumptions build, because the assumptions are very are close allies to um, assumptions are very very close allies to uh, to resentment. Uh, let me see Dion's question. I missed the explanation to what do you do when your partner is resistant? Um, that's a that's a actually an entire Facebook live. Like, what do you do when your partner is resistant? I, you know, there are multiple things that you can do. Uh, I here is my my position. My position is that is that you you want to state your position. Hey, you know, I these are my concerns. This is what I'm feeling. You know, and you ultimately have to give that person the time to. Um, to process things and to make a decision about where they want to go and what they want to do. What is not effective is trying to get the person to talk, to tell you what's going on, trying to push them or force them to act in a certain way. It's not, it's not going to be effective. It, um, it's just not going to work. And so when, when your partner is resistant, you state, hey, I was hurt by, or I was concerned about. I really want to talk about this issue, but I understand that you need some space. I would like if you can kind of give me a little bit of a timeline of what when we may be able to talk about this. But if 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 you can't provide me with a timeline, then I I guess that I have to abide by that, um, and then leave it alone. You may approach it again uh, sometime in the far future. <laughs> But it's, I think it's important to understand that, that when the partner is resistant, you, it, it becomes important or there's value in backing off. But the problem with backing off is that it creates more resentment um, or it creates more anxiety for you. Um, I think that in times where there's more peace in the relationship, you want to talk about what it feels like when that person is resistant, that you share with them, let them know that you may feel alone or that you may feel um, alienated at some level. So share them and you know, share those feelings in peacetime. 
But the big issue with resentment, I'm sorry, with resistance, is that you don't want to push. Because pushing just is like pushing for some deeper and deeper into their own self and on uh, into greater and greater levels of uh, here, um, of resistance. Now, so we're talking about what to say. Uh, and, the, and the other one is actually should have been what to do. One of the things that you want to watch carefully for in, in terms of rebuilding intimacy after a fight is that you want to watch very, very carefully for a repair attempt. A lot of times in a conflict, your partner may make attempts to reconnect with you in the relationship. And because of the fact that you're so angry or upset, you don't see these repair attempts or you see the repair attempts as negative. So can we give you an example? You get into a, you know, a tiff with your, your partner and you, your, your partner, the two of you, um, your, your partner, he or she chooses to, um, they choose to not to wash the dishes. As a, hey, let me just, you know what, let me, let me clean up the kitchen. Let me do some cleaning up here. And so you can approach this like, oh, so you just clean up the kitchen now, huh? Right? And, and see that as something that's negative. So now all of a sudden you're cleaning up the kitchen. But you could also see, hey, you know, I, I appreciate that the person is making an attempt. Because if you throw cold water or hot water, depending on where you're from, if you throw hot water or cold water on that issue, I mean, on that attempt, it's going to be harder for that person to attempt again. So then you have, so you have that particular problem uh, to deal with. And I think that that's where, where, um, where it becomes more and more difficult to, to rebuild the intimacy. And this is a big one. Be very, very careful that you watch for those repair attempts because you watch the, for the repair attempts and you you are open or welcome into the repair attempts. Otherwise, what's going to happen, as I said, is that it becomes harder and harder to reconnect and to rebuild that emotional connection um, uh, with your with your partner. I think the last one that we're going to I'm going to go over with you. Uh, uh, tonight is um, the last one I want to go over you is and I think that I said this a little bit earlier is to trust the process more than your partner. Sometimes you you if the rules say or if I you know based on some of the stuff that I said tonight that it may be helpful to back off a little bit. Then as anxiety provoking as it se may seem, then you want to back off because the process. There's a pretty standard process, I think, in terms of uh, repairing or maintaining uh, that rebuilding an emotional connection. And sometimes we want things to happen too fast, so we push too hard, too fast, and your partner may not necessarily be ready for that. And you know, then you have you have issues. So I think you know that that it is helpful to to have faith in the process. Have faith in the fact that your partner is attempting to um to uh to, to to your partner is attempting to make change. Your partner is attempting to um to process the issue that they're dealing with. All kinds of things. So so I've gone over <clears throat> gone over tonight um what the you know in terms of restoring intimacy. We've talked about the fact that conflict is not necessarily a bad thing. That conflict is a good thing. Um, the importance of remaining calm. We talked about flooding again, or what what flooding is, and how flooding can uh, drive um, drive conflict in relationships. Um, we've talked about uh, what to say, how to think. What are some of the things you can think uh, in terms of shifting your thinking uh, in a conflict? And we've talked also about uh, what to do or what not to do. Um, in a conflict, and the big one in that particular section was this idea that don't take your your conflicts to Facebook or Twitter or Instagram. You know, just don't. You know, you're gonna create resentment that you don't you don't want to deal with. And then we also talked about not using sex as a as a panacea. Um, the other one is uh, is also 
um then what to say we talked about finally we talked about say, saying sorry um we talked about leaving time to process allowing your partner to process and so on and so forth so tonight um pretty quiet tonight uh you know but this happens quiet happens sometimes um if you guys have any questions at all you want to shoot me those questions um been on for a little while, not not a long time tonight. We've been on for I can't see um um how long we've been on for. Uh it looks as though we've been on for a little bit a little bit over an hour. Um the so we've talked about we've talked through some of this stuff and um appreciate you, you guys coming on. Next Thursday, if you have a topic that you want me to talk about, um Shoot it, put that topic in the comment section. I will be very, very, very open to uh, topics. I mean, I have some topics of my own, but if you have one, share it. Um, share it with uh, with uh, the group, um, and I will uh, if I will, you know, be open to that. Um, next Thursday when we come on, it will be the day before we leave for Connecticut, where we will be taking couples flight school. Uh, to uh, Hartford, Connecticut, and so that's extremely exciting for us that we'll be going uh, to the north for three days, three days of couples fight school, and and so I am over, overjoyed that this is actually going to be happening. Um, remember to uh, there was a there was a post. I'm going to put this here in the comment section, just giving you. Um, Give you a link to you know some of my some of our websites and um, and uh, if you need to consult me for whatever reason these things are there and some of the other products and services that are there so I just added that information to um, to the page uh, so so that you can um, can share that with friends if you like. Um, Guys, I, I will be signing off in a little bit if there are no more questions. Any questions, any concerns, any anything that you want to talk about in terms of restoring intimacy? If there's a question that you have, shoot that to me. Um, just to also remember that our, our website for um, for conflict, couples conflict, uh, is couple, couples conflicts with an S dot com. Um, so if you wanted to uh, to um, to go browse that to see some of the stuff that we have on there, uh, that will be awesome. All right, uh, we're gonna close off in a second. Any questions? Any thoughts? Any uh, things that you want to share before we go? Um, so my core audience, I definitely appreciate you coming on. I see um, Dion and Monique. Um, and Michelle, you were on tonight also. The core audience is important to me. Um, and remember, you can still share this video on your pages, even though we're going to be signing off, because other people are going to be taking a look at this this stuff uh, at a later date. So um, that that's that's something that I want to uh, to kind of share with you. Um, I miss Rodriguez, and thank you for staying on uh, with us um next week's topic i don't i don't know uh you know i'm trying to um to see here what next week's topic is going to be what are we going to talk about or you know there's there's all this stuff about um we've talked about, we talked about mental health issues around conflict i mean the, there are a vast or vast array of topics so if you came up with something that you wanted to hear about um i mean i would i would be open to that uh, I you know, <laughs> I think you know that um that I don't know I don't know what would be a good topic I mean there's just so much stuff that we can talk about uh how to discuss finances to take thing the next step in a relationship how to discuss uh, finances to take the next step in a relationship um what what do you mean by the next step Rodriguez. So uh, tell me what you mean by the next step. I mean, finances are a big issue uh, in um, 
in conflict, relationship conflict. Um, but I'm trying to see what's a good way of shaping this topic so that we don't, you know, so that we kind of get more people involved. Um, I think what I might try to do. Ah, uh, okay, got it. Um, so if you're if you're trying to discuss finances, um, in terms of leading up to marriage or or, or moving in together, in, you know, in this case, um, what that next step would be. So discussing finances. Okay, that's one. Um. Overall, how to work in the relationship to better each other's financial standing. That's um, that's that's something that we can do. Um, I'm trying to see what what else other possible good topics that we could have. I, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to post a question on this page as well as my other uh, page, um, just asking for topics. That usually kind of works very well in helping to generate some discussion. Um, and so let's do that and let's see if we can come up with a good topic for next week another some options i like your topic um uh, miss rodriguez i also i want some some expanded options because i want to make sure that i kind of get you know, i have a larger group of people uh, who are who are maybe interested in this particular topic now before i sign off if you're on i i you know i want to say thank you there are those of you who did reviews for for me last time i was just super happy to see the reviews dion uh, miss monique and uh uh miss rodriguez you also gave me a review i appreciate that thank you very very much um those of you who who haven't and you feel so inclined um there is a a, a button i think it's on the left of your page where you can um where you can do a review of uh, just a couple's fight school page, that actually helps to to do to give more social proof. People are actually coming on and talking, um, and so I would um, I would you know if you're open to that, it's at the top of the page I think. Um, I would go ahead and uh, click that five star and also um, uh, write a review, write a review of the page. Uh, so I appreciate that. Um, thank you guys very, very much for coming on tonight. Slow night, but also a very important topic. What do you do to restore intimacy after a fight? So for those of you who are who came on and stayed on the entire time, thank you. Thank you much for this. And uh, we'll keep pushing on. And I will put a question up uh, to, get, to have a topic for next week. Um, and we are going to... Uh, talk next week you guys have a really really good night uh, sleep tight and uh keep following couples fight school um because there's stuff posted on here every single day here guys uh, good night and we will talk very very soon where do i turn it off straight there we go